Marty Leeds loves his numbers. You play these 88 keys with your 28 phalanges, and 88 divided by 28 is 3.142, an approximation and widely used abbreviation of the infinite and transcendental number of pi, or 3.1415. The 88 keys of a grand piano divided by the 28 phalanges of your hands giving us pi gives us a little insight into just why it is called a piano. He will literally take anything, put some numbers to it to shock and amaze you. Mirroring it, we have a mirroring property here. This is exactly what we did with our alphabet. There's the other thing that we're doing in the, the, with, with this cipher. We're mirroring one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 six, five, four, three, two, one. That's a mirror, right? And then you say, well, where's mirrors? Well, I don't know. How about right here? How about your entire body is symmetrical? There is nothing that he won't comment on using the magic of numbers. We all know that women's menstrual cycles are tied to the moon with a woman's period happening roughly every 28 days. And he is back. <laughs> Welcome along to another episode of Tin Foil Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring today's Tin Foil Tuesday. Blinkist helps you to discover and understand powerful ideas from books and podcasts in a short amount of time. It offers the best selection of non-fiction books, takes the key takeaways from those books and condenses them into 15 minute text and audio explainers called Blinks. The idea being that when you interact with Blinkist, you will experience meaningful inspiration that leads to insight and growth. Many of you will be very pleased to know that there are some absolutely brilliant science related Blinks. From Physics of the Future by Michu Kaku to Einstein by Walter Isaacson. And one in which I've recently enjoyed immensely, Genius by James Gleek, which looks at the life and times of Richard Feynman. That man right there. Fascinating to find out more about his involvement in the Manhattan Project and what his life was like outside of science. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Blinkist has condensed over 5,000 titles within 27 different categories. Thanks to Blinkist, you can access valuable knowledge and great ideas quickly. Right now, Blinkist has a very special offer just for this very audience. Click the link in the description to get a seven day free trial with Blinkist and then 25% off a premium membership. Right, back to Mr. Marty Leeds, who by the way, has rebranded his channel to the Gnostic Church and Academy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, that's a mouthful. So. Back to him and his nonsensical numerical ramblings, where he's going to tell us about the astrology of Noah's Ark. I know, I know. So let's seek out Noah's Ark and what it actually means, and let's do it in the sky. The story of Noah, as we all know, he builds this big ass boat, gets all the animals from all around the world to come two by two aboard the boat, and then 40 days, 40 nights, it rained, flooded, destroyed the earth, of course. And then he sends this raven and this dove out, and then the dove comes back, and basically it's like, hey, now you can land, essentially, right? Okay, apart from dealing with the monumental amount of feces, all the food required for the animals, and the amazing fact that penguins went from the Middle East to Antarctica on foot, there are today over 8.5 million species of animal. There is no way that this happened. This is the constellation known as Argo Navis. Argo Navis is a huge constellation, by the way, just as Noah's Ark is a very, very big boat. Argo Navis is actually three constellations, so these are the sections of the boat. So there's three aspects of the ship. There's the aft and the stern. We have the sail, which is the vela, and we have the keel, which is the bottom portion of the ship, and that's called the Carina. Argo Navis was one of Ptolemy's original 48 constellations. And it is, of course, no longer recognized, which is why it was split into three separate constellations. And let's not forget, constellations are just pretty patterns of stars in the sky as seen from our solar system. In modern times, Argo Navis was considered unwieldy due to its enormous size. Hydra is the largest modern constellation, and this constellation, this boat, is 28% larger than Hydra. So by that logic, you can fit a Hydra in and not much else. So in other words, it's a really, really big boat. Okay, okay, let's do the maths here, Marty, seeing as you like numbers so much. Right, so there are around 8.5 million species uh, of animal on Earth, ranging from insects to elephants. So let's say on average, each species needs around 0.5 meters squared of space. And as it's a pair, then each species will need about one meter squared meter of space on average. That means that this big boat needed around 8.5 million square meters of space. That means you would need a boat four times the size of Monaco. Just saying. This Argo Navis is 
skimming along the river of the Milky Way. The flooding of the river is the Milky Way as it comes up on the horizon. So there's your Milky Way River, the river of the Milky Way. Argo Navis is sailing on that river, and that's flooding. It's the rising of the waters. Now I know, Marty, as a flat earther, you haven't just shown an excellent example of Earth's rotation there, have you? Oh dear, it appears that you have. Nice. So let's read from Genesis. Genesis 8, 6. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. Oh, imagine the splinters making a boat four times the size of Monaco. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. Well, what was the point of the raven then? Am I missing something here? And again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. So when he sent forth the raven, this is a constellation. And this is the constellation Corvus. Corvus is a small celestial constellation in the southern celestial hemisphere, which is exactly where Argo Navis is. The southern celestial hemisphere. Are you sure you're a flat earther, Marty? Corvus means crow in Latin. A crow is no different than a raven. Okay, so Genesis says up, he sent forth a raven, which went to and fro till the waters were dried up from off the earth. So there's our Corvus, our crow constellation. Then he sent forth a dove, and that's the constellation Columba. Its name is Latin for dove. Columba Day is a bird family consisting of pigeons and doves. Okay, so this Columba constellation is literally a dove. Literally a dove. Literally. I don't think so, Marty, do you? And so here we have the two birds that Noah in his big Argo Navis ship sent out to see if things were going to be okay. So what do we have going on here? So there's your flood of the Milky Way, and that is your river of stars. And there is, in, in blue there, you can see, that's your ark. Looks like a dinosaur footprint, actually, that boat. Quite ironic. It's the biggest constellation. It's an enormous ark, and it's sailing the river of the Milky Way. And that orange there, that's the literally the flood the Milky Way. That represents this flood here. More globe earth proof. So there's your flood, there's your ark. To the right is Columba, the dove, right by the ark. And to the left is the crow or the raven. And that's just to the left of the ark. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, too, of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. As I said, mountains and mountains of poop. So what is the two of every sort? Well, we got uh, two, two fowls after their kind, and that's, of course, the birds of uh, the Northern Cross, Cygnus and Aquila. Those are two birds in the skies, two constellations, so there's the fowls. Two of every kind, of course, we have the snakes. We've got serpents, uh, serpents kaput, serpents cauda, which is the constellation serpents, the two aspect of that. And of course we have Draco, Draco the dragon, which is a, another a serpent, so two serpents after its kind. Of course we have, we gotta bring lions aboard the Ark, the Argo Navis. And that's of course Leo, uh, Leo Major, if you will, and Leo Minor, there's two, two lions that are aboard that ship. And we gotta remember to bring the horses, the celestial horses we have to bring, which is of course Pegasus, which is a flying horse. And then of course we have Monoceros, which is mono means one, and Seros means uh, horn. And that's your unicorn, one horn. So we've got the two celestial uh, horses. We've got Pegasus and Monoceros. So birds, horses, lions, and snakes. You're kind of running out of constellations, buddy. There's only 88 of them, not 88 million. Don't forget, we gotta, we gotta remember, we gotta bring the leopards and the lynx. So we gotta bring those two cats. And don't forget the two fishes. We gotta bring two fishes, um, one that's going up, one that's going down, representing, of course, male and female. So we gotta bring those two fishes, which is, of course, Pisces. Um, I think the fish will probably be okay in a flood. Just a guess. And don't forget, there's got to be two bears that come aboard Argo Navis, the Ark. We got to bring Ursa Major, and of course, we can't forget Ursa Minor, and we can't forget Canis Major and Canis Minor, the two dogs. So we got to bring the, the dogs, and we got to bring the bears, and we got to bring the two fishes, and we got to bring the, the leopards and the, the, the lynx, and we got to bring the celestial horses and don't forget the lions we got to bring the lions and the snakes and of course the all the cattle and uh the, the birds 
And what about the lizards, the insects, the goats and the buffaloes? What about all the other animals, Marty? And these are all the animals that were brought aboard uh, Argo Navis. Total nonsense. Honestly, it feels like you're making it up as you go along, Marty. I genuinely do not understand how people can hand on heart claim that Noah's Ark is a true story and actually happened. It makes no sense at all. Q Kent and Dr. Peel's buddy, who will no doubt do a Whack an Atheist Wednesday in a week or two. Well, there we go. Another Tim Ford Tuesday all done and dusted. I do hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy it, then please do consider subscribing. I say it every time. We're close to half a million. Really want to get there soon. Uh, and if you really, really enjoyed it, then like the video as well. Thank you. Just enough time to once again thank Blinkist for sponsoring today. Remember, Click the link in the description uh, to get a free seven day trial and then 25% off a premium membership. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week and I'll see you all on Friday for the return of Phuket Word. See you then. <laughs>